In this video, I will be showing you the secrets to always win as a solo sloop in Sea of Thieves. Many of the things I will be talking about can also be applied to other boats in the game. So if you want to get win streaks like this, nice. As well as have people say things like this to you. You know, there is such a thing as grass, right? Like, you can go outside. Bro, I'm actually playing in my backyard using dial-up right now. Oh, okay, yeah, for sure. <laughs> Make sure you watch the whole video so you can learn how to increase the rate which you win fights. For starters, when playing on a solo sloop, you need to understand that you alone are responsible for the entire boat, so there are plenty of things you have to manage in order to fight effectively. Let's start with the basics. As a solo sloop, you need to make sure you always have cannon angle on the enemy boat. You also need to make sure you repair the boat as it takes damage, as well as bail the water out. You also need to keep your mast from completely falling down, because if it does, you will get easily screwed over. As well, you have to make sure that you keep your wheel repaired so that you can maintain cannon angle on the enemy. Then while doing all of this, you need to also be using the cannons to sink your enemy by putting holes in their boat and mobilizing the enemy boat by getting their mass down and also trying to kill the enemy with cannonballs. Now you're probably thinking that all of that is a lot for one person to do. You would be correct, because keeping an operational solo sloop isn't the easiest of a job. So let's talk about how you should prioritize all of these jobs as a solo. Your main priority should be keeping a cannon angle on the enemy boat, because if you don't, you are unable to apply pressure and will get nowhere in the fight. This should always come first, unless you are super close to sinking or unless your mast is about to fall down. Now that we know keeping a cannon angle is number one priority, and that saving your boat from sinking with a quick bail and keeping your mast up are number two priority, you're probably wondering. What do I do if I'm about to sink and my mast is falling down? It may suck, but in this situation you will have to let your mast fall down, because you have a better chance of recovering with a fallen mast than you do with a sunk boat. The next priority should be immobilizing the enemy by getting their mast down, because this makes them a sitting duck unable to run away. The best way to do this is by killing the enemy with a cannonball, so that it gives you an opportunity to immobilize them by taking their mast down without receiving any returning fire. Putting holes in the enemy should only become priority once you have immobilized them. If you are unable to do any of this because your enemy has turned away to run and repair their boat, you need to try to shoot yourself out of your cannon and board the enemy boat to get their anchor down so that you can follow up and come over there and sink them with your boat. If you are playing hourglass pvp, you can also use this board to your advantage by spawn killing the enemy while sailing their boat out of the zone to secure a win. While doing this, I would recommend setting areas of the boat such as the back by the map table on fire so that the fire will pop holes in the boat and start to sink it. Now let's talk about the next priority as a solo sloop, which in most cases is keeping the wheel repaired so you can keep cannon angled for yourself at all times. Then the last priority is keeping the hull of the boat repaired, which may sound weird, but if you don't prioritize all the other things, you'll end up in a bad position with lots of holes anyway, which will get you sunk. The only time repairing the hull of the boat should be prioritized over repairing the wheel is if while your wheel is broken you are still able to maintain cannon angles on the enemy boat. Then you can prioritize getting the hull repaired instead of the wheel so you don't have to deal with as much bailing. And the only time repairing the hull should be prioritized over quick water bales is if you don't have much damage on your boat and have enough time to repair holes without sinking. Repairs should be kept up with at any time you have free time as a solo. This means you should be doing repairs while you and your enemy are unable to put pressure on each other. Now that we've talked about your priorities as a solo sloop, let's talk about what weapon loadout you should be using. As a solo sloop, you should be using Blunderbuss and Sniper. Why? Because Blunderbuss is good for dealing with enemy boarders, as it can one-shot kill them and does good knockback to get them off your ladder. As well, you can quickly one-shot an enemy which you harpoon onto your boat with the Blunderbuss. Now, the Sniper is good for long range, for trying to deal damage to the enemy in situations like when they have tons of cannon fire coming in on your cannon line. Doing this bit of damage will force the enemy to heal, and during that time you can get back on your cannon and continue to apply pressure. If you don't have cannon angle on the enemy but they do on you, I would recommend switching to flintlock and sniper temporarily so that you can try to long range double tap an enemy before they can heal, which will secure you a ton of time while they are dead. Now that we know the basics as a solo sloop, you're probably wondering, what do I do to start the fight anyway? If you're not doing hourglass pvp and come across a random fight, try to engage the enemy by giving yourself a cannon angle on them, and then go from there. But if you are doing hourglass pvp, it gets a bit more complicated. Get ready for a lot of information. When doing hourglass pvp, you and your enemy spawn face to face. Before you even spawn in, you want to be ready by the wheel, so you can immediately start turning it 360 degrees to the right. But why to the right? There's actually more than one reason to turn to the right, instead of the left. The first reason being that the left side of the sloop actually only can take 7 holes instead of 8 like on the right side. This means that because your left side is exposed to the enemy instead of the right, you are more likely to take less holes in your boat. The next reason is because of the positioning of the lower stairs on the sloop. The lower stairs are on the right side of the sloop and have a thin wall between them and the exterior of the boat, as compared to the left. This means if the enemy is on your right side, they can easily hit cannonballs near the stairs of your boat and do more damage and knockback to you while you are trying to bail water out from that area. This alone can get you more easily killed or unable to repair slash bail. Another reason to engage the enemy on the left is that when your mast takes damage, it takes damage on the right side first, then the left, then the middle. 
This means that when your mask takes a single point of damage, the damage will always be on the right side first, leaving you less exposed to incoming cannon slash sniper fire while repairing it. As well, when your mask fully breaks on a sloop, it falls to the right side of the boat, which can affect your vision on that side. The last main reason to engage the enemy on the left side is because of the position of the cannonball barrels on the sloop. Because the barrels are on the left, it's much easier for you to access them while shooting off the left than off the right. Now that you know why to turn right at the start of the fight and have the enemy on the left side of your boat, after you've done that, you'll want to raise your sails to half to turn a bit tighter and also so that you're already ready to have your sails at bit raised to slow down for once you immobilize the enemy boat to keep cannon angle on them. After you have cannon angle on the enemy at the start of the fight, you can straighten out your wheel and let the boat sail itself. With cannon angle on the enemy, you will want to try to kill them with a cannonball to put yourself in a winning position. Whoever gets a kill on their opponent, gets the opponent's mass down, or gets the most holes on their opponent will be in a winning position, meaning they have the advantage in the fight and need to capitalize on it. Now let's talk about what to do in different winning positions as a solo sloop. First, let's start with getting a kill on the enemy. If you get a kill on the enemy, their boat now has no one to manage it, which puts you at a big advantage. Once your enemy is dead, now is your chance to get their mass down, either using two chain shot, one chain shot and one cannonball, or three cannonballs. Let's now talk about the next winning position, which is getting your enemy's mass down. Whether you were able to get the enemy's mass down without needing to kill an enemy player, or got it down because you did, you are now in a winning position. Once that mast is fully broken, you now need to not let the enemy repair their mast and get it fully to drop. What you need to do as a solo in this situation is raise your sails enough to where you are slowly moving, as well as turn your wheel in such a way that you will be circling the enemy. Doing this is called a death spin, and allows you to shoot cannons at the enemy trying to raise slash repair their masts as well as put holes in their boat. Once you are in a death spin, you need to let the boat pilot itself and circle around the enemy while you get on your cannon and try to kill the enemy repairing the mast with cannonballs, as well as hitting the mast with cannonballs to make it start falling again. While you are doing all this, you need to also be putting holes into the enemy's hull so they start sinking while unable to move. If you go between putting holes in them and making them unable to repair their mast, they will continue to get more and more holes until they have to let their mast fall and at that point, they are a complete sitting duck. Then all you need to do is keep putting the holes into them and keep trying to kill them until they sink. For the final winning position, same as the other winning positions, when you're in a position where you just have more holes on the enemy than they do on you, you need to keep up the pressure and try to kill the enemy or get their mass down to put yourself in a better winning position and then go from there. Now let's talk about neutral positions, meaning you and your enemy are on an even playing field. If you're both fully repaired with none of you dead and both of your guys' masts are up, you need to try to get yourself into a winning position by doing what I mentioned before. But let's say you're in a neutral position where both you and your enemy have your masts fully dropped. First thing you want to do is make sure you maintain cannon angle on the enemy boat so you can potentially put yourself in a winning position by getting a kill on the enemy, or by putting way more holes into their boat than they have in your boat. After you have an angle on the enemy, you need to do one of those things if you aren't sinking very fast. But if you and your enemy are both sinking very fast while your mast is down, you need to go and get some repairs done so you can be in a winning position by having less holes than the enemy, while also occasionally hopping on your cannon to put more holes in the enemy. Once your enemy is dead or they have so many holes that they need to panic save their boat is when you can get your mask back up. But I only recommend getting your mask back up if the enemy isn't in a spin and you're only able to get holes on one side of their boat. Because if your mask is up, that means you can death spin them and get holes on all sides of their boat until they sink. But if they're already spinning, you can already get holes on all sides of their boat and don't need to waste time getting your mask up. And instead should use that time to get holes in their boat. And keep up the pressure until they sink because one person can't keep up with every hole on a sloop being popped at once and they will sink with enough cannon pressure in this situation. If both your guys' masts are down and you are facing away from the enemy without cannon angle, you need to shoot at the enemy with your sniper and try to kill them to put yourself in a winning position. This is when you can also switch to sniper and flintlock to double tap the enemy with ranged weapons to secure a kill. But if you don't have cannon angle and are facing the enemy, you need to harpoon the enemy on your boat and kill them with your blunderbuss to get into a winning position and have time to put yourself into a better position. From here, getting yourself to this kill advantage winning position gives you time to potentially recover your boat and even potentially get yourself going into a death spin. But what if you find yourself unable to do all of this and end up in a losing position? A losing position is when you are dead but the enemy isn't, you don't have cannon angle on the enemy but they do on you, your mast is broken or knocked down but the enemy's isn't, or there's more holes in your boat than there is in the enemy boat. 
If you are in a losing position where you are dead but the enemy isn't, as a solo, to be honest, you can't do anything, so always try to keep yourself alive, obviously. But now let's talk about what to do if the enemy is able to cannon you, but you can't cannon them back. In this situation, you should probably run away so you can get into a neutral position. But if running is impossible, you need to get cannon angle as fast as possible. But if you can't do that even because your wheel is completely broken, then you'll need to focus on getting the wheel repaired as fast as possible. But if you can't even repair the wheel because the enemy is hitting it repeatedly, then there are two things that need to be done. If your boat is pointed away from the enemy, you need to snipe at the enemy to try and get a kill so that you can have some pressure taken off of you so you can get things operational again. This is also when you can quickly switch to sniper and flintlock to double tap the enemy without allowing them time to heal. But if your boat is pointing at the enemy, you need to harpoon the enemy onto your boat and get a quick kill on them with a blunderbuss. But only harpoon them onto your boat if your boat isn't hurting very bad, because if you do this and you mess up and don't get the kill, they could end up killing you and completely screwing you over. So if you're hurting and in this situation, just try to snipe them instead. Now let's talk about what to do if your mast is fully broken or has fallen down completely, but your enemies has. It. If it's fully broken but not yet knocked over, try to keep it up at all costs, but don't risk putting yourself in a bad losing position to do so. If you're able to catch and repair it, good on you. You're now back in the fight. But if the enemy keeps knocking it over and over, you will need to try to turn the back of your boat to the enemy. This makes it harder for the enemy to kill you while you are repairing the mast and also makes you able to quickly get away if you do end up getting the mast operational. While you are doing this, you can also mix in shooting at the enemy with a sniper to help slow their cannon fire and maybe even kill the enemy. If you aren't able to get out of this and your mast ends up falling down completely, you need to sync your movement with the enemy so you can always have cannon angle on them. This will allow you to return the cannon pressure and potentially put yourself in a neutral or winning position by knocking down the enemy's mast, killing the enemy, or putting tons of holes in them. As well, doing this will also make most of the enemy's cannons hit one side of your boat, so you have to deal with less holes while trying to recover. If your boat isn't badly damaged during this time, you should be sending cannon fire at the enemy. But if it is badly damaged, you need to be getting repairs on the boat, and should be repairing the holes that are on the opposite side of the boat than where the enemy is. Once you get yourself into a neutral position while your mast is down, try to get yourself in a winning position, and if you can get into a winning position, that is then your chance to get your mast up and get going again. But make sure you don't worry about re-raising your mast until you are in a winning position, because prioritizing a fallen mast while in a neutral position will often get you put back in a losing position. While you are in a losing position, if your harpoon has angle on the enemy bow, you can also try to harpoon the enemy player to kill them and get in a neutral position. But make sure you get the kill, because while in a losing position, if you mess this up, this could either get you anchored or killed and put in an even worse losing position. It's a very risky play while in a losing position, so make sure you get a kill from it. If you ever end up in a very bad losing position where your mast is fully down and you're almost sunk, try to make it so the back of your boat is always facing the enemy by sinking the turn of the wheel so you take as little damage as possible, because the back holes in the boat don't get you sunk as fast. And then if you end up getting yourself operational, you can get out of there much faster. But if your mast is down, you're almost sunk and your wheel is broken, so you can't turn with the enemy, you need to focus on bailing and repairing the boat while trying to double tap the enemy with sniper flintlock combo. If you can hit both shots in a row, the enemy has no time to heal and will die. If you can do this, there's a good chance you can recover the boat and get yourself into not as bad of a losing position and potentially a neutral position. But if you don't get a kill in this kind of situation, I almost guarantee you will sink. And that's why you as a solo sloop need to utilize all the tips mentioned in this video so you don't end up in that position to begin with. Now that concludes the video, so if you enjoyed, make sure to like and subscribe. Also leave a comment letting me know if you have any further questions about this topic. And you can check out another one of my videos right here, which I'm sure you'll enjoy since you already watched this 13 minutes of my content. Also make sure to share this video with some of your friends that could use these tips. And last but not least, leave a comment letting me know which was your personal favorite tip. Anyways, thanks for watching and have a good one.